Again, my name's Kelly Wood, and I am a groundfish, specifically a rockfish biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. And I will be showing you how I utilize GIS to determine black rockfish habitat in southeast Alaska. First of all, where is southeast Alaska and where are we doing our black rockfish research? Um, some of you may already know where southeast is. Um, it's located in the panhandle of Alaska. And the primary emphasis of our black rockfish, rockfish research efforts at this time focus on three management areas. And they are the northern southeast outside waters, the southern, uh, central southeast outside waters, and the southern southeast outside waters. And there are management areas. But I'm going to focus primarily on that red area, central southeast outside, since that is an area where um, most of our harvest occurs. So we have a problem. <laughs> Alaska Department of Fish and Game currently um, has management problems regarding black rockfish. Our current management guideline harvest level or fishery quota for black rockfish is outdated and vague. <laughs> Without going into too much detail, a portion of the estimate was based on habitat in which these polygons in yellow were created based on historic harvest data and depths between 10 and 30 fathoms. We believe that a buffer was simply built around known harvest locations to create these habitat locations. And then this blue polyline was created to estimate the area of coastline thought to have black rockfish habitat in relation to these polygons. GHLs were determined by assuming 10,000 pounds for every 10 nautical miles of black rockfish habitat. Again, that blue polyline but were subjectively adjusted based on what managers thought may be poor habitat or had poor past harvest performance. So it's been recently decided that we can do better than this and we can do it with the use of GIS. ADF&G currently estimates yellow eye rockfish at biomass by utilizing an ROV, affectionately named buttercup along with previously estimated habitat of this species. Um, a number of random one-kilometer transects are generated for a particular management area, and again, this happens to be CSEO. Uh, and we send down the ROV to collect this video along this transect line. We then obtain yellow eye densities and lengths from video review. And we want to take this method, but use GIS to better estimate suitable habitat for black rockfish in these management areas. And then conduct surveys in areas we determine to be highly suitable. We can then use this information to collect more accurate biomass estimates for black rockfish, as we do for yellow eye, which will result in more sustainable GHLs or fishery quotas for the species. So what are black rockfish and what do we know about their habitat? Black rockfish are described as being a semi-pelagic rockfish species, meaning they spend a lot of time near the bottom and the midwater column. They're typically found in waters less than 55 meters, although they have been observed as deep as 366 meters. They exhibit vertical home ranges, frequently diving to the ocean floor, uh, for spatial reference, they don't do a lot of horizontal movements, so they're easy to model. Adults tend to spend more time in shallow waters in the summer months and then tend to go into deeper waters later on in the year, most likely due to food availability. They're typically known to be associated with both low and high relief rocky terrain and in uh, strong current locations. And these pictures to your right are images taken from our ROV uh, in May of 2018 during one of our yellow eye surveys. And you can see high relief rocky substrate that they prefer. And just a quick video from one of our ROV surveys this year. It shows black rockfish swimming close to the high relief rocky terrain. So what are the benefits of using GIS to create habitat suitability models for black rockfish in southeast Alaska? 
If you have limited habitat data on a species, utilizing GIS to determine suitable habitat criteria can help you fill in those gaps. Too few employees are needed to create these models. With the use of GIS, right now I'm the only one creating these models. And we don't need to hire a team to go out and collect this data. Um, and three, using GIS is cost effective when you compare it to other research methods. Most of our specimen data has been collected from either old surveys or harvest logbook data. And our bathymetry and substrate data was mostly acquired for free from other agencies. And four, instead of having limited amount of funds to identify habitat in small areas, you can use GIS to estimate habitat for a large area. I use four environmental variables for habitat suitability model for CSEO, um, depth, terrain ruggedness, slope, and substrate. I'll be explaining my methods in greater detail in a minute, but the general workflow went like this. Um, I used a bathymetric data set to create depth, terrain ruggedness, and slope, and a multi-point substrate shapefile to determine substrate habitat. These were all manipulated one way or another. Values from these four rasters were then extracted to known point locations of black rockfish and summarized. And criteria for suitability ranks were created and summarized data was broken down into classes based on standard deviation. These four rasters were then reclassed based on four ranks, one being no suitability all the way to four being high suitability, according to specified criteria. These reclassed layers were then inputted into a weighted overlay in ArcGIS, and weights were applied, evaluated, and revised if needed. The final suitability maps were created, and ultimately the end goal was to validate these models with some sort of accuracy, accuracy assessment of some kind. So we acquired our bathymetry data set, the map on the left, from the Alaska Longline Fishermen's Association, or ALPHA, they built this data set with 20 years worth of data contributions from their commercial fishing fleet members. They acquired a grant and it was all paid for and it created this beautiful data set. Our substrate data set was created by the USGS and can be acquired online from the public, for the public um, through their website. The link's right there. And these data points can be seen on the right. So as I mentioned in the workflow, the original bathymetry raster from Alpha was converted to two separate environmental factor rasters for modeling. Uh, slope was created using the slope tool with an output measurement in degrees. Terrain ruggedness, or VRM, was created using the benthic terrain modeler in ArcGIS with a neighborhood size of three. And again, the substrate points were converted to an extrapolated polygon layer using the Thiessen polygon tool in ArcGIS Pro. I use this method since um, it's a categorical data set and cannot be used for traditional interpolation methods. And this layer was then converted to a raster for reclassification and further analysis. And using depth as an example, I extracted the raster values to specimen points, which were outputted to the specimen attribute table. I then used summary statistics to sum the number of specimens found at each raster value. Depth classes were defined using standard deviation, and then the number of specimens were summed for each depth class. The percentage of specimens for each depth class was determined and which was then used to determine the suitability rank for each class. And as you can see, using the suitability criteria, these two um, uh, classes with the circle in red um, had a percentage of specimens that were higher than 20%. Therefore, this was ranked as four as high suitability habitat classification. And this was done for all four of the environmental variables. So depth was reclassed from the bathymetry raster on the left to the 
uh, reclassified um, map on the right using the reclassify tool. And again, this method was used for all four uh, environmental factors. So we've got depth, terrain ruggedness, substrate, and slope. Uh, the blue represents no suitability, and green as low, orange as moderate, and red as high suitability. Each of the reclassed rasters were then inputted into weighted overlay in ArcGIS with a weight of 30 for slope, depth, and substrate, and then a weight of 10% for VRM, or terrain ruggedness. These weights were frequently adjusted to find the best fit. Ultimately, the final weights uh, were loosely based on where the number of specimens ended up and um, what we know from literature about their habitat preferences. The final habitat suitability raster can be seen on your left, with red being the high suitability areas, off-white as moderate, and um, low as green, and blue as having no suitability. The map on the right shows the high suitability areas only as the yellow hatched polygons. And as you can see, once I overlay the old designated black rockfish habitat over the new version, much of the black rockfish habitat was missed in the northern portion of CSEO. And we do know for a fact that there are black rockfish there, so that was good. <laughs> And it also overestimated the habitat in the southern portion of CSEO. Ultimately, our plan is to use the new estimated habitat area in combination with ROV surveys to create a better estimate of black rockfish biomass, hopefully resulting in a more sustainable harvest for the future. However, <laughs> before we get to that point, some improvements need to be made to the model, which include conducting an accuracy assessment yet to be determined and utilizing training data. So I've learned a little bit since um, this whole forum has started. I'm hoping to apply some of this to this model. Uh, we also need to acquire more rockfish location data to make the model even more solid and utilize some of that for validation purposes. Seasonal HSMs may need to be created as literature states that black rockfish can be found in variable depths during certain times of the year. Additional environmental variables may be needed. Um, I'd really like to use current strength as one of the variables and possibly distance from pinnacles since rockfish tend to stay close to one pinnacle for their whole life. And hopefully with more data, defensible weights for the weighted overlay could be used, um, possibly using a regression in R squared values. And once we've, well, we have actually tested one black rockfish transector in a yellow eye survey in August, and unfortunately we had some issues maneuvering the ROV in shallow rocky water. So we're hoping to try that again earlier in the year, possibly in May, so that um, we can test it in deeper waters because the black rockfish tend to be lower down on the seafloor during that time. And once we feel confident in the results and our methodology, the plan is to apply these metho methods to the other um, management areas in Southeast and possibly statewide. And ultimately, the final message is that GIS is critical to the sustainability of our rockfish fisheries in Southeast Alaska. And without it, we could not estimate suitable habitat and ultimately could not create accurate harvest levels in this area. So I just want to acknowledge a couple of groups and people. I owe a massive thank you to Alpha for allowing me to utilize their data set and um, from their Alpha Seafloor Mapping Project, which was help funded by the Oak Foundation. And then I also want to thank my colleagues, ADFNG, Mike Byerly, and Josh Mum for their ROV work at ADFNG and suggestions to the Black Rockfish Habitat model. And to Andrew Olson, our ground fish project lead for allowing me to do this. So that's all. Thanks. <laughs>